Before this report, you had a price target of 110. The rating was a buy. Uh, a lot of announcements here, also an EPS beat. Let me talk about the announcements for a second. Uh, cost cutting ahead of schedule. Uh, Disney entering the Fortnite world with Epic Games and a big investment there. And of course, the Taylor Swift movie coming to Disney Plus. Did any of that, did it change your rating or your price target? Well, it did change our rating, or it did change our price target. We moved from 120 from 110. Uh, we moved up the numbers kind of, you know, pretty dramatically. We were at 427 in earnings for this year. We're now uh, in the 460 range. Uh, and we think earnings have bottomed. And, um, you know, the story here was really D to C, but all the new content just gives us, you know, more confidence that you're going to see that growth. All right. Um, really a strong quarter. I want to get to some of the announcements and what they could mean for the activist investor battle and also the future of Disney. But one thing I do want to point out, stock is up, up over six and a half percent. But there was a revenue miss. And then also, if you look at Disney Plus, the price increases, they led to a decline in subscriber count. Is there anything in this report that you think that investors should be concerned about or may actually give fuel to Nelson Peltz and his activist investor fight? Um, yeah, I mean, look, this is a massive company. There's a lot of information that was released yesterday. I would say the subscriber decline in Dis Disney Plus was expected. Um, the revenue miss that you talked about was largely in the entertainment business. I would say linear entertainment advertising was a bit worse than we expected. Mm -hmm. I thought on the sports side, things were a little bit better than expected. Parks are a little bit better than expected. So there's a lot of moving parts, but I think as a whole, um, I think investors and, and you know, potentially activists should be happy with what they saw. All right, so Bob Iger here on CNBC with our Julia Borston. Really a clear focus on Gen Z and even Gen Alpha and also leaning into sports, the standalone ESPN app and, of course, that big combo app that we heard about yesterday. Um, for you, how does it view your future of Disney? The stock has underperformed since Bob Iger took over. Is this an inflection point? I mean, is there, is there something that has dramatically changed when it comes to this company in your mind? I think there has. I mean, I, I think um, you, you really see that in the earnings numbers. You know, for, for the last couple couple of years, really, the earnings estimates has been coming down. Uh, we we think they've bottomed and, and they're starting to move up again. But a part of it's the cost, but also there's there's real growth in the in the D 2 C section. Um, I think that uh, sports can inflect here next year when they launch the new ESPN flagship app. Um, and the real question is the brands, the the content brands. And, and you know, Bob's only been there a little over a year. But sort of rejuvenating those brands, getting Star Wars and Marvel and, and sort of Pixar back to where they were. That's the real story here. And I think I think, you know, over the course of 24 and 25, we'll really start to see that.